If you ever needed proof that the universe has a sense of humor, just look at salt. The same white crystals that make your french fries taste perfect are also the reason oceans move, life exists, and civilizations were born. It's tiny, cheap, and everywhere. Yet without it, the planet would fall apart faster than an overcooked souffle. Salt isn't just something we sprinkle on food. It's one of the fundamental ingredients of Earth itself. Every drop of ocean water, every animal cell, every storm, even the way continents breathe, all of it depends on salt. And here's the twist. Salt isn't simply about taste, it's about balance. On a planet where everything runs on chemical exchange, salt is the great regulator. Let's start with the basics. Chemically, salt, sodium chloride, is a bond between two elements that couldn't be more different. Sodium, a soft, reactive metal that explodes on contact with water, and chlorine, a poisonous gas that once filled trenches in World War I. Put them together, and you get something your grandma puts on her dinner table, nature's little joke. But the real magic of salt lies in what happens when it dissolves. Drop it in water, and it splits into charged particles, sodium, and chloride ions. Those charges are what make salt special, because they allow water to conduct electricity, store energy, and support life. Our oceans are giant containers of this salty solution, about 35 grams of salt per liter. That might not sound like much, but multiply it by the volume of the oceans, and you get enough salt to cover the entire planet with a layer almost 500 feet thick. The ocean's saltiness is what gives it power, not metaphorically, literally. It controls density, temperature, and movement. When salty water evaporates under the sun, it leaves its salt behind, making the remaining water heavier. That heavier water sinks, while fresher, lighter water rises. This constant dance called thermohaline circulation, is what drives the global ocean conveyor belt. Without it, Earth's climate would collapse into chaos. Think of the ocean like a giant bloodstream for the planet, moving heat and nutrients around. Salt is what keeps that bloodstream pumping. When cold, salty water sinks in the Arctic and Antarctic, it pulls warm water from the tropics to replace it. That flow moderates weather, keeping Europe from freezing and distributing oxygen to the deep sea. In other words, salt is why London doesn't feel like Siberia. If the salinity or temperature of oceans changes too much, say from melting ice or freshwater floods, those ocean currents slow, and the entire climate system stumbles. Salt, quietly and invisibly, keeps Earth breathing. But salt doesn't just control oceans, it controls us. Every nerve impulse in your body, every heartbeat, every muscle movement depends on salt. When your brain tells your hand to move, it's not shouting words. It's sending electrical signals through sodium and potassium ions. Salt makes that electricity possible. Without it, your nerves would go silent, your muscles would lock, and your organs would fail. That's why every animal, from the tiniest jellyfish to the largest largest elephant craves salt instinctively. It's not seasoning, it's survival. Even our blood is basically a diluted ocean, a salty liquid carrying life through our veins. Early scientists like Rene Quinton believed that's no coincidence that our cells evolved in ancient seas, and when life moved onto land, we brought the ocean inside us. Every drop of sweat, every tear, every heartbeat is a quiet reminder of that connection. We are walking bags of seawater, electrical, balanced, and alive thanks to salt. It's no wonder then that salt shaped human history. Long before electricity or gold or oil, salt was the world's first currency. Entire trade routes and empires rose and fell because of it. The word salary literally comes from salarium, the allowance Roman soldiers received to buy salt. Wars were fought over salt mines in Africa and Europe. Cities like Salzburg, literally salt fortress, owe their wealth to it. In China and India, salt taxes fueled revolutions. Even Gandhi's famous salt march in 1930 wasn't about flavor, it was about freedom, the right to control a substance essential to life. Salt wasn't just a spice, it was power. And it still is. Salt plays a hidden role in nearly every industrial process on Earth. From manufacturing glass and paper, to producing soap, plastics, and medicines, it's used to soften water, to preserve food, and even to melt ice on highways in winter. Without salt, global logistics would grind to a halt. In fact, every year humanity mines or evaporates over 300 million tons of salt, roughly 40 kilograms for every person on Earth. You've probably touched or eaten salt mined from deposits that are older than dinosaurs. What's incredible is how salt connects everything. Chemistry, biology, climate, economy, into one continuous loop. Oceans feed rain clouds. Rain feeds rivers. Rivers carry minerals back to the sea. Every step, salt tags along, balancing, conducting, and regulating. It's not dramatic. It doesn't explode or shine or roar. It just works constantly, quietly, everywhere. And yet, the planet's relationship with salt isn't static. As ice caps melt and rivers flow faster, the ocean's salt balance shifts. Regions that were once salty are becoming fresher, changing how currents behave. It's subtle, but it's rewriting climate patterns. In the North Atlantic, for instance, 
scientists are tracking fresh meltwater from Greenland, mixing with salt water, and it's already slowing the great conveyor that regulates global heat. If salt levels keep changing, Earth's weather might never be the same again. Salt, the humblest of minerals, might just be one of the most powerful forces shaping the planet. If you dig deep enough beneath the Earth's crust, you'll find more salt, not just oceans worth of it, but ancient seas locked away in stone. Long before our modern continents took shape, vast shallow oceans evaporated under the prehistoric sun, leaving behind thick layers of crystallized salt. Over millions of years, those layers were buried, compressed, and hidden beneath desert sands or mountain roots. Today, miners carve through these deposits like slicing into the memory of Earth itself. Every grain of rock salt you hold in your hand is a fossilized ocean, a time capsule from a world that no longer exists. And salt isn't done shaping the planet. Deep underground, it moves, slowly but powerfully. Under heat and pressure, salt behaves almost like a thick liquid, rising through rock in giant creeping domes. These salt domes are geological elevators, pushing layers upward, bending the crust, and even trapping oil and natural gas along the way. Many of the world's richest energy reserves exist only because salt created pockets for them to form. Without salt, our map of global energy and power would look completely different. But salt's story goes back even further, to the dawn of life itself. When Earth was young and oceans were forming, volcanic gases filled the sky, lightning flashed across steaming seas, and minerals dissolved from rocks into the water. Among them, sodium, chloride, potassium, magnesium, the ingredients of salt water. That chemistry became the cradle of biology. In those salty pools, the first cells learned how to balance ions, manage charge, and generate energy. In a sense, salt taught life how to live. The very first spark of metabolism, the electrical flow that makes nerves fire and hearts beat, began with salt. It's not just seasoning, it's the script of creation. Even today, every creature on Earth is built around that same ionic balance. Birds flying across oceans regulate salt through special glands near their eyes that literally drip out the excess. It's why seabirds seem to cry when they drink seawater. Crocodiles and sea turtles do the same. Fish living in different salinities, from freshwater rivers to deep seas, constantly adjust their internal chemistry to maintain equilibrium. If that balance breaks, they die. To live on Earth is to negotiate with salt every second of every day. And humans are no different. Our brains are wired to crave it, our bodies to regulate it, and our cultures to depend on it. But we also learned to wield it. For centuries, salt was humanity's greatest preservative. Sailors carried barrels of salted meat across oceans. Empires salted fish to feed armies. Salt turned perishable food into tradable wealth, giving birth to global commerce. In ancient times, sharing salt with a guest symbolized peace and trust. Yet salt, like all powerful things, carries a warning. Too little, and systems collapse. Too much, and they corrode. Oceans are proof of that balance. In places where evaporation outpaces rainfall, like the Dead Sea, the salt concentration climbs so high that few organisms can survive. The water becomes dense, heavy, lifeless. In contrast, where salt is too diluted like melting polar seas, circulation slows and ecosystems struggle. Nature, it seems, doesn't love extremes. It loves equilibrium. That equilibrium is now under pressure. Human activities are quietly rewriting Earth's salt map. We dump millions of tons of road salt each winter to melt ice, most of which flows into rivers, changing freshwater ecosystems. Agricultural runoff and desalination waste are making coastal zones saltier. So next time you reach for that shaker at dinner, think about it. You're not just adding flavor. You're holding a piece of the planet's bloodstream, the same element that makes storms spin, keeps hearts beating, and ties all living things together. Salt doesn't just season the earth, it sustains it. 